Until I was 16 years old, my parents both struggled with substance use disorder. I also didn't get to meet a sober version of them until that time. There were many times where I would have to call my friends um, to either come get me or just to see if I could stay in their houses that night um, just because things weren't safe at mine. Um, and every time I needed that, I was greeted with welcoming arms um, by all my friends' parents and my friends, of, of course. Um, there was never a time where I was denied that. At times we had people living with us that I didn't know or trust for that matter, living in the room right next to me. Uh, we also didn't always have food in the fridge or necessities throughout the house. When I was in high school, um, I can remember crying before going to school all the time. Um, I eventually decided to go to alternative, an alternative education program rather than through the regular high school. Um, and that was a big improvement for me. It definitely helped to get the things that I needed to done. Um, and it's the only reason that I was able to graduate. It only takes one adult to change a child from going down the wrong path. Aside from my grandmother, I did have other adults that I would turn to. My grandmother had passed away uh, because of her lung cancer by the time that I got to high school, so I had started taking more care of myself um, where my parents were absent. Um, I started working when I was 15 years old. I got my work permit to work at a local diner. Um, I tried to avoid going home until it was time for my curfew every single night. Um, and it was at that diner that I was working at where I met my boyfriend who also worked there. Over the last few years of my parents' addiction, um, they got into more dangerous substances. Um, while I didn't know the extent, uh, extent of their use, I found out later that heroin and meth had become uh, very controlling in their lives and bringing dangerous things into our home. Sometimes those things were people. The height of the chaos and fighting in our family home culminated in the fall of 2018. Um, there was an early morning incident where my parents got into a physical fight um, and the police were called, my dad was taken away in handcuffs, and he could not return home. Um, soon after that, I was kicked out of my home and forced to find my own way because I didn't want to pay rent at 16. And this is where everything began to change for me. Both of my parents left the area for rehab on November 3rd, 2018. I was living with my boyfriend uh, at his parents' house at the time and had to be responsible for myself. At the end of November, early December, we got our first apartment together. While we were living in that apartment, I applied for emancipation at the age of 17. Um, it was granted to me without any hesitation by the judge. My boyfriend and I live um, in the house that we bought ages 18 and 21 with our five pets. We have four cats and a dog. In my spare time, I tend to my 50 plus types of house plants. Uh, taking care of them reminds me to take care of myself, of course, with the sunlight and water. Um, and while I have not fully healed from all of my past traumas, I will be working on that every day of my life. Welcome to another episode of Recover Loud. I'm Mike Paddleford, and I recover loud. Hi everyone, I'm Lori, and I recover loud. This episode is a special one for us this week, and we hope that you can all take something from our guest, Taylor. Our daughter has agreed to share her experience growing up in a home where we were doing our best, suffering from substance use disorder. 
We have also agreed to answer some of Taylor's questions. We have not pre-screened her list of questions, but are excited to continue the discussion that can contribute to the journey of healing for all of us. Taylor has always supported us in our recovery, and we do want to just prepare you viewers for some tough conversations today. In active addiction, there are a lot of ugly truths. I didn't choose the path of destruction that addiction took me on, or the collateral damage that affected the lives of everyone around us. Taylor is the youngest of our three children and was living with us up until the point where we decided to seek help. Today, she is one of our largest sources of support, strength, and hope in our recovery. Hi, Taylor, and welcome to Recover Loud. We appreciate you joining us today and look forward to all you have to share with our viewers. And honestly, I'm a little nervous. Thanks for having me on the show. So Taylor, before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself today? I'm 20 years old. I live in Caribou, Maine. I work for a call center from home and I tend to my plants during that time. So I'm a little nervous too, um, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into some of this real conversation, okay? So if you're ready, Taylor, I will ask you my first question. As your mom, I would like to know, what is something that you clung to during those years when it was so chaotic and I wasn't there for you mentally as a mom? One of my biggest um, supports from myself. I just always would remember that nothing lasts forever. Um, no situation, no feeling, no event, anything. For a lot of years when you were younger, uh, we tried to hide our substance use from you. Um, we would hang out in our bedroom, we'd go to the basement, um, you know, and I always used to uh, dread the day that you all realized that it didn't take 10 of our friends and three hours to help us do the laundry in the basement. Do you remember when you first realized that there was something going on? There was a day that I had found some paraphernalia hidden under the couch at the View Street house. Um, I had known before then that something wasn't right as I had heard rumors from other people as well as my friends had actually mentioned to me that something wasn't right. Um, so yeah, there was, there was definitely a little bit of knowledge but definitely not um, a lot. Okay, and, I, and I'm sure you didn't imagine the extent to which um, we were using. We like to get right into it, and you've helped me immensely even when I didn't necessarily want help, right? So, this one's a tough one, but <clears throat> knowing me now, uh, for three years, as a, a sober mom, what was it that was, you were able to turn from that dislike of who I was for 12 years? Genuinely, I didn't have a lot of a choice. I had to switch from being upset and angry uh, almost immediately to being supportive because in my head, if I wasn't supportive, there would be a relapse in the future. And that wasn't something that I would like to have in my brain that, you know, I caused. Yeah, that if, if you didn't find that supportive structure that I, I or dad would relapse? Of course. Did that hinder your progress of healing to a point or did it force you to, to heal faster, kind of the way that we forced you to, to, to grow up? me to heal faster. Um, it definitely uh, prevented it, in my opinion, uh, because I wasn't yeah. able to heal. In that time, I had to just be supportive. I wasn't able to take the time for myself and really heal from the traumas that I've been through. You had come down over the summer and we took a ride to Old Orchard Beach. And my recovery started at that beach. And uh, I remember I, I wanted you to have such a good time with us that day and, and understand the importance of that location for me. Um, but you, you weren't enjoying it. Um, you were having a tough day. And I remember we asked, you know, what, what's going on? And you know, I, I believe we took some time that day and, and gave you permission at that point to be upset, but to please accept that that we aren't those people anymore. 
and what we do today, honestly, is because of you and because of those, the healing that, uh, you know, we hope you can find. Um, you, you mentioned that you were afraid of us relapsing without your support. Um, and honestly, the idea of losing your support helped keep us clean. Taylor, what would you tell yourself if you could go backwards to that 10 year old child, to that 14 year old child, to that 17 year old child, knowing your parents in recovery at that point? Well, what could you go back and give for comforting words? I know you said, you know, this nothing lasts forever, um, everything will change, but what is it you needed that you wish you would have had that you could provide for yourself? That is a very good question. Um, fortunately, at those times, I, I really did have support from so many different people, whether they realized it or not. Um, especially in high school, um, my teacher specifically, I had her for the last three years of my high school, um, my time in high school. And if it wasn't for her, I don't know if I would have made it through high school. I did end up dropping out, but I still graduated with a diploma. I, I'd like to talk about, you know, some of the memories you have as a child. Do you have many good memories uh, of your childhood or has everything been tainted today by the knowledge of, of what was going on during those times? That's also a good question. Genuinely, I don't have um, an incredible recollection of my childhood as there was a lot of trauma. Um, and unfortunately, because of that, I don't have a lot of the good memories either. There is a few good memories, um, but most of them, you know, family of vacations were paid for by drug money. And so a lot of our fun times have been tainted because of what paid for it to get there. You know, uh, and, and that's important for me today when, um, when we build new memories with you, um, that they are genuine. You know, that's a, a lot of my recovery, you know, changing the narrative around our relationship. And, you know, what we do today, I, I hope, uh, you know, will last your lifetime and, and you can hold these memories. So we've asked you plenty, plenty of questions and uh, your turn, fire away. All right, let's start with an easy, an easier question. Um, what caused you to get clean? And this question is for both of you. For me, there was multiple um, events that happened. Um, the most significant one um, at, at 2018, in October of 2018, uh, there was an event in my home. The police were involved. Michael was removed. Um, we'd been together for a long time, so it was very difficult for me to know how to wake up and deal with day to day without your dad. Um, so we broke the protection from abuse, which is not suggested, and Michael came across the town of Caribou in the middle of the cold, found me in the woods, <clears throat> and he told me I looked like I was gonna die. It also was an event with you um, that we agreed we wouldn't go through, but it was a very bad day. And then both of my boys um, trying to do an intervention. And I left them sitting on my couch to go sell substances. Um, all of these events turned into a swirling mess. And I don't know you walked back in that door, and I remember seeing you, um, and I was, I was ready, because your dad was getting clean, and I didn't have to hide it anymore. I didn't want to do this stuff. I needed help. So I walked into my emergency room, and I was, I don't remember actually doing the walking, but I remember sitting down 
And she said, what are you here for today? And I said, I want to get clean from heroin and meth. And the wonderful people at Cary Medical opened their doors, opened their hearts. They gave me resources. They didn't leave me alone. That's what got me to rehab. Mike? What helped me make the decision um, that day to, to go into detox and then to seek further treatment, knowing that a detox and, you know, a five-day detox and then going right back to the, the life I had, I, I knew that wasn't going to work for me. Um, but what led me to detox that day was, you know, a conversation with you. And, you know, it was after some ugly events that happened and some clarity that for the previous 16 years, you really didn't have parents that were present for you in your life. And the conversation we had that day, it, it really touched me. And I decided at that point that I'd had enough and that you guys deserve so much more. And I was just glad I realized that it wasn't too late you know, to change that. Um, so I decided from that day forward, I was gonna be your parent. You know, it, it took work, it, it really did. I mean, it, it wasn't just a snap decision that worked out for me. It was days of mulling it over and failed attempts for a few days until I really realized that, you know, I couldn't do this on my own and I was gonna have to go find a way to make it work so that I could be there for you guys. Okay. The question that any child has or might have when they have parents that struggle with substance use disorder could be, why were we not enough sooner? And this is for both of you. That is a very deep question. And I'll, I'll take that one. Um, first, um, you were always enough. Um, you were always more than enough. But the way addiction works, you know, the way those substances work, it really wasn't a choice for, for me. You know, it wasn't a choice of drugs or Taylor. Um, it was dictated. And once I got the substances, then I could do what needed to be done. Um, you know, I, I believe that it, it's important that I take responsibility for all that I've done to you in the past. You know, n not being present um, making you guys late, canceling plans, um, you know, some of the, the worst chaotic scenes that we had in the house, you know, I, I do take responsibility for that. Um, but those weren't choices that, that I wanted to make. Um, you know, like I said, I, it was dictated for me. Um, First thing on my mind in the morning was how I was going to use that day. Um, the second thought may have been, um, you know, what are Taylor's plans? What does Taylor need today? But until that first question was answered, I couldn't get to the next question. Um, so you've always been enough. And, you know, I wish there was a way to show that to you. I can only show you that today, you are a priority in my life. And mom, do you answer that question? Yeah. Um, I didn't know how to love you would be my honest answer. Uh, we talk about the generational trauma. Um, and again, I'm grateful now to be able to learn how to be your mom and be a mom. 
Um, I had to choose comfort, peace, and stability, and I was always choosing chaos, because it's all I ever knew. So, like Dad said, you are and always have been enough. Your brothers are enough. I was not able to stop. I don't even know if I knew that I wasn't putting you first because in my justification of my brain was as long as I have a substance, I can run you guys all over town and do your sports. Um, I could hide behind my sunglasses or my makeup and nobody would know. The day that I realized I was choosing substances over you was when I spent time digging through your room to take your hard-earned money and go buy drugs. And for that, I am so sorry. And I know that that would not be something that I would do as me today, but it does show the depths of substance use disorder and that it can make a mom immediately forget the most important thing in her world is her children. So I love you and uh, I'm sorry that I made you feel like you were not enough because you've always been enough. What would be one thing that you could have or would have told your children during your act active addiction had you known what you do now? It's important for not only people's children, but for everyone to realize and accept that substance use disorder is a mental illness. Um, we don't choose to get to the point that your mother and I were at. Um, you know, in the beginning, we may have chosen to use a substance, um, but then that choice was taken from us. And, uh, I mean, it, it took me a while. In order for me to, to forgive myself and anyone else, I, I had to accept that this is a disease. You know, I can't control, um, you know, what's happening around me um, because you know, my, my sick mind was, was in, in the driver's seat. Um, it wasn't until I was able to, you know, clear my mind to really think and accept those things. Um, so I think an understanding of the disease of addiction, um, starting at an early age, would help a lot of people uh, from this point on. Um, because we are, we're good people that that are doing um, things against our own will. Um, you know, I didn't choose or want to choose um, to take your birthday money um, or to deny you Christmas gifts uh, because I I'd spent all of our money. Um, you know, I wouldn't have wanted to choose um, canceling plans with you. Uh, because I couldn't find some uh, something to take the edge off. Um, you know, it, it's it's a disease, and um, you know we all have to accept that. We all have to learn that, and then we have to work to a solution. Um, but just writing people off as you know drug addicted, uh, worthless individuals that helps no one. Um, and understanding that, you know, it, medical intervention is really what's needed. To run to their safe place and tell them everything. I would have told you to go to your grandmother, the neighbor that saved you guys that night. Um, I was a scary person.
I would have told you to tell someone for yourselves and then to get help for yourselves. And that was a hard thing to come to because there should have been more help for you, Tay. And the nature of addiction, uh, you know, it is, it is hard to ask for help. Um, you know, we think we're in control. Uh, we think we can handle it. We think we can get ourselves out of this. Um, and that's not the case generally. Um, asking for help is something that I had to learn to do. Um, and without asking for help, I never would have gotten to where I'm at today. Um, so asking for help is, is a very important piece of advice. Yeah. So Taylor, when we left um, for detox and rehab, how old were you? I was 16. Okay. So as a 16 year old, all of a sudden, you know, your parents weren't there anymore. Um, thankfully, you didn't lose us, um, as many other children have. Um, how did you survive as a 16-year-old? My boyfriend has been my biggest supporter, and I don't know where I would be without him. Um, when I was kicked out of my home, I ended up living with my boyfriend's family for a little while. They helped us out a lot. They ended up helping us find our own apartment, um, which was one of the best things that could have happened to us because we needed that. Um, and. A little while into living in that apartment, I ended up getting emancipated at the age of 17. Um, it took a while. Uh, it was scary. And, you know, I got to my court date on the date of my emancipation. And my parents weren't there to try and fight it. Um, so that was a little bit heartbreaking. Although I had already known you weren't going to be there. But it was still... It was what I was expecting, but it wasn't what I had wanted. If you could use this platform of the Recover Loud show to speak to a child, a person suffering with substance use disorder, a family a member affected by somebody using substances, what would be the one message you would tell someone to get through today? Tell them to please remember that it doesn't last forever and that they should tell someone. You know, I can recall a time where I was already living on my own. Um, it was after you guys had headed out to, to get clean. And I was getting a ride from my boss to work because I was working a town over and I was just rambling on about, you know, my, my story and how I have had parents that were addicts for my entire life. And she looked at me kind of funny and she said, you know, you're really brave to just be telling people that. And I, I can remember thinking, like, I don't understand why she's saying that. I thought that I had to, you know, that's the only way that I can get through it. Excuse me. That's the only way that I'm going to be able to get through it. Um, so why not? Why not recover loud, right? Once upon a time in the magical land of Rainbow Valley, there was a little bunny named Benny who loved to eat sweet, delicious candies. At first, Benny would only have a candy or two as a special treat. But as time went on, he found himself wanting more and more candies every day. Slowly, Benny's friends noticed that he wasn't as playful and happy as he used to be. They realized that Benny had become addicted to candies and was no longer able to control his cravings. With the help of his friends and a wise old owl, Benny learned that too much of anything, even something as yummy as candies, can be harmful. Together, they helped Benny overcome his addiction by finding healthier ways to enjoy sweets in moderation, leading him back to his joyful self in Rainbow Valley. Recover loud, everyone. Have a good, Have a good night. night.